Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Alex Salmond has, over the past week or so, at the Fringe, indicated that he would like to bury the hatchet, he would like to rekindle the sort of friendship that he once had with Nicola Sturgeon. This, of course, was before she was probably involved in ousting him as leader uh, with claims, which turned out to be false claims, of sexual shenanigans, uh, and she led that coup. Now, undoubtedly she didn't pull the trigger, but I'm pretty damn sure she loaded the gun. Maybe, allegedly. Um, but, you know, time passes uh, and, and things move on. Now, they once had a very good relationship. He was almost her mentor, uh, and then things went very, very sour. Now, he is sitting there, and he would like to rekindle this friendship, move along, put things in the past, because, after all, he's getting on. Maybe, who knows, He's um, he could have some kind of terminal disease and he wants to make things good before he goes. We'll never know. She, on the other hand, today, very loudly, very sharply, has renounced his overtures, has said that she wants nothing to do with him. Uh, she, she's declared that he is not somebody I want in my life. Now, I'm going to put this down, I think, to guilt. I think she's got guilt about trying to meet him to uh, to go back to the, the stage of friendship it once was at. I don't think she can do it. I think she knows what she's done. Perhaps that's what it is. Uh, but it does strike me that um, while Alex Salmond, and I disagree entirely with his politics, I'm not saying anything else with that, but he does have personal charm. She, of course, does not. And I will quote uh, Thomas Hobbes from Leviathan. Uh, and that is when describing her... I will describe him in the words of, of, of that great writer. Nasty, brutish and short. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what she said. And let's see really into the inner psyche of Nicola Sturgeon and her hate-filled existence. Here goes. Now, of course, uh, Hobbes was talking about what life would be like without a government. You know, he said it would be nasty, brutish and short. But of course, she was the head of that government and she too was nasty and still is nasty, brutish and short. Uh, and you can just see she's just got a face, sour face, isn't it? It's like a bulldog sucking vinegar. Uh, anyway, Nicola Sturgeon has publicly and irrevocably turned her back on Alex Salmond, saying he is now somebody that I don't want to have in my life. Uh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't really want to have you too far in his life either. Let me pull that across a little bit. Uh, the former First Minister said a reconciliation with her predecessor was not something that I want. And she felt indifference rather than anger towards him. If she ever felt anger, the anger was because he was never prosecuted. He won his case. She really wanted him to go um, because she wanted his job. And it's more with her. It's not just that she wins, but everyone else must fail. Uh, she said, we don't have long on this planet, some more than others, and you're going to spend a lot of yours behind bars with a bit of luck. Uh, we've got a limited amount of time to spend with people. Oh, you're going to have lots of time to spend with people. Uh, she said, "We, uh, I want to spend the time with the people I, uh, that I have, with the people who make me happy and who I like and who I enjoy time spending time with. Has she got anyone like that? I mean, other than maybe Gillian... Does anyone else actually want to spend time with her? She's a, a narcissistic psychopath. Um, she also said it was really sad when former leaders tried to get their old jobs back. I think it's sad when former leaders have to run away because they're scared of what the police will say to them. And then they disappear for a week after questioning. That's sad, isn't it? I think it's sad when £600,000 worth of people's money has gone missing. I think it's sad when you have to hide your money by salting it away in the form of £110,000 £110, motorhomes. I think it's sad. I think it's also sad when you have to hide your sexuality by pretending to marry and having a lavender marriage rather than being an out, uh, out and who you are. That's sad as well, isn't it, Nicola? It's very sad. Earlier this week, Mr Salmon said he hoped that he and Miss Sturgeon, who have not talked since the disputed sexual harassment claims emerged against him in 2018 would make up. However, appearing on the Edinburgh Fringe in broadcaster Ian Dale's all talk show at the Pleasure EICC of oh, Pleasance, sorry, EICC, of course, because she'll have nothing to do with pleasure. Miss Sturgeon was crystal clear that that wouldn't happen. 
asked about the Alaba Party's leader's comments. Mr. Stur uh, Mrs. Sturgeon, Miss Sturgeon, Ms. Ms. Sturgeon, God, it's hard. When, why can't she just either be out or married or whatever? Anyway, she said she'd be very really surprised if he meant it. I suspect he did mean it. I really do think he meant it. She went on. What I'm about to say really doesn't come from a place of anger. Certainly not anymore. Maybe in the last few years at different times this would have been different. Why are you angry with him? Why anger, Nicola? Because he was an innocent man. So you can't be angry at his guilt. Uh, he won his case. So you can't be angry that a free man is innocent. You took his job and won. So you can't be angry that he lost his job. So the only thing you can be angry at is yourself because you know what you've done. So that's where that anger is. It's self-loathing, isn't it? Anyway, she said it doesn't come from a place of anger. It maybe comes more from a place of indifference, actually, rather than anger. I don't foresee that a reconciliation, you know, that a reconciliation, she said. It's not something I want because she doesn't want to go anywhere near him because she knows it's guilt. This is, some, this is guilt talking, isn't it? She said, I was very close to Alex for a long, long time. We achieved great things together and I'll always be proud of that. And I'm not trying to rewrite history here. Yes, you are. You're always rewriting history. It's what the SNP do. Um, but over recent years, I don't know, he's revealed himself to be somebody that I don't want to have in my life, that I don't particularly want to have a relationship with. I don't judge anybody who takes a different view. Well, that is quite clearly an absolute lie. That's exactly what you do. That's what you did every single day as leader of the SNP. Nobody was allowed to have a, a different view. What a liar. Uh, anyway, we don't have long on this planet and I've got a limited amount of time to spend with people. I want to spend the time I have with the people who make me happy, and who I like and who I enjoy spending time with. And as I say, it doesn't come from a place of anger anymore. She keeps mentioning that it doesn't come from a place of anger. It really doesn't come from anger. No, it's not anger. It's not anger. It's not anger. It's not bloody. It's not anger. You see where she's going with this. Full of anger, full of hate, full of loathing, full of self-loathing. She absolutely hates him because of what she's done to him. She loathes him because he escaped. He was innocent and he didn't go to prison. She, she absolutely loathes him, doesn't she? She must be so filled with bile, with hatred. Absolutely must be burning inside her. The hate must be like a black hole of hate. She probably absorb other people's hate as they walk past. <laughs> like some kind of hate-filled succubus. She says, I've gone through the whole spectrum of emotions with Alex. Well, I don't believe that for one minute. <coughs> Psychopaths like her don't have emotions except anger and hate. That's all they have. They don't have love. They don't have compassion. And that's evident. That's so evident. She has no compassion, no love. She has all the negative stuff, the hate, the anger, the lust even is negative. But she's got no love, no no compassion, no joy. There's certainly no joy in that woman's life, is there? Um, the remarks prompted intakes of breath around the nearly full auditorium. Who would want to go and listen to her? Miss Sturgeon worked side by side for Mr. Sam for 10 years at the top of the SNP, acting as his running mate when he made a comeback as party leader in 2004. After three years of acting as his deputy in Holyrood, she became deputy first minister when the SNP took power in 2007, a position she held until she was able to replace him in 2014, ousting him with whispering campaigns. Earlier, without mentioning Mr. Salmon by name, Miss Surgeon also said it was really sad when former politicians pined after their old jobs and pretended they could make a comeback. <coughs> Excuse me. Asked if she ever make a comeback as first minister, she said, "No, well you can't. It's very hard to do that when you're in court and veil, isn't it, love?" She said, "There's something really sad about somebody who has just done the kind of job I've done and then leaves the stage. I don't just want to be the kind of former leader who's always exuding this kind of sense of I wish it was back in my old job. I've had my time as first minister. It was the privilege of my life, and I've had the time. I'm looking. Uh, I've, I've had my time," she said, "and I'm looking forward." To the next phase of my life and doing things differently well she'll certainly be doing a lot of different things won't she slot buckets six o'clock lights on in her stand by your beds <coughs> waiting for the officer to open the gates go and doing your kitchen duties that'll be her days that'll be for the rest of her life with any luck anyway she'll stop there come up and we shall just laugh at that very sad sad woman 
who has known no joy in her entire life. She's even got a face, hasn't she? A face that says, I cannot smile. I have no joy in my heart and I never will. Sad woman. Coming up. So there we are. This uh, this horrible, horrible little squirt of a woman. How she managed to retain power for so long is a mystery. Politicians need to have charm. They need to be able to smooth a room. They need to be able to play the, uh, you know, the, the, the hand they have. She has no hand. She's only got an iron glove and she slams it down time and time again. Well, she's done. She's she's acted uh, in a way that I hope, I hope from the investigations mean that she is going to go to jail for a very long time. I want to see her in jail, you know, with a little bucket filled with her shit and piss. If they, I don't know if they have one of them in a ladies' jail. Probably don't have it in the ladies, do they? They've probably got in-cell toilets. Uh, but in, on the other hand, she could end up in, uh, in in a cell with a man. That would be ironic, wouldn't it? That would be ironic. She'd finally have a man in her life. And she'd be finally having proper sex for a while, because I guarantee that would happen. And that would make a change, wouldn't it? There, she can't come out. She can't do it. She's just an, a horrible, horrible, inhumane blob, really, isn't she? She's not a person. She's not real. She doesn't have any any forgiveness in her because that is a human trait and she's not human anyway i shall stop there thank you very much for watching do please hit the subscribe button for this uh, we're getting very close to a target and uh, all you uh, regular viewers who are not yet subscribed now is the ideal time we've given old uh, old sturgeon a bit of a slap in the face there surely that is worth a button push so push the old uh, button for me and until next time stay safe stay well and let's keep fingers crossed that she does eventually go to jail, where she will have a truly awful time. But we won't. Bye.